Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith and uh, Shackleton just uh, took off and uh, he's got these good hiding spots. So I can always bring out the food and uh, get his attention and interest in being on video again. But I'm just going to stick to my discussions of um, Antarctica and the uh, phenomena of sudden stratospheric warming, which will greatly impact the uh, the uh, weather events that are occurring down in that region now. And as I said in the last video, these events are very, very rare for Antarctica. 2002, there was a strong sudden, strat uh, sudden stratospheric warming event. 2010, there was one that was not as large. And uh, now, ongoing, uh, is a probably the largest one that we've, we've seen um, in, in Antarctica. And also in the last video, I related it, my, my, my idea or thoughts that basically an asymmetry in the Antarctic sea ice, so loss in some regions and more ice in other regions, that can elongate the polar vortex and bring parts of it over the continent of, of Antarctica, whereas normally it's just circling over water at the at the outskirts of Antarctica. So if it elongates and go, starts going over parts of Antarctica, then it's given an upward velocity and upward momentum, and that carries it up into the stratosphere, cuts the vortex, and causes these events. So I'll just continue where I left off uh, previously. Okay, so this is uh, this is in uh, um, my this is my Twitter feed. Okay, at Paul H. Beckwith. This is Copernicus uh, uh, posting. And what you can see here is this is from August. This cycles from the 1st of August to yesterday. So you can see the vortex here, very cold here. It starts to get elongated. Parts of it get pushed over the uh, continent where it starts to rise. And here we go, very, very strong warming over here next to a very, very cold region. So that messes up the jet streams. It carries them over South America, it carries them over um, New Zealand, can make it very cold and wet. Um, and uh, it also makes Australia further up a lot drier and a lot hotter. Okay, here's another uh, animation showing the, uh, showing the, uh, okay, so you can see the temperature here, minus 80 degrees going to plus 12 over here. And I showed you that in Earth Null School. You can see, you can freeze it. I see, I see plus 12 over here, minus 80 over here. So it causes this warming, splits the polar vortex, and uh, really monkeys with the weather there. And this is much more common, this event in the Northern Hemisphere but I think it will become more common in the Southern Hemisphere as the uh, major sea ice losses um, occur. And an asymmetry in the sea ice around the continent, I think can trigger this type of event. Okay, one of the things that happens is because you get this, you need very, very cold temperatures uh, to uh, allow the chemical reactions to go on in the stratosphere that, that destroy ozone. Okay, um, so what's happening is this is the ozone hole here, 16th of September, 2019. Very, very small when you compare it to 16th of September, 2018. Very, very powerful ozone hole covering, covering um, much of Antarctica and extending out beyond the borders of Antarctica over the sea ice. And here it is this year. I mean, it will grow a bit from there, but we're going to probably have a record year. So, so the levels are um, also we saw a similar type of thing, but not as strong in 2002. Um, this is an example of the uh, warming here. OK, this is a normal uh, temperature warming at 10 hexapascals over the South Pole. And here is what we what happened um, end of August jump September ongoing huge jump. So you know we've actually gone up here to plus ten degrees from about minus seventy or so. So that we have an eighty degree Celsius rapid rise in temperature in the upper atmosphere. You know ten hexapascal pressures over the South Pole. Okay, so this is the 
this is a very, very powerful event and it's sort of unprecedented in its size and it's happening, you know, early, early in September. Okay, um, here are some other things. This is kind of a big deal. We have a true sudden stratospheric warming. Wind reversals in the southern hemisphere have only happened at 10 millibar in 2002. Okay, 5 millibar, 82, 2002, 2004, 2 millibar, you know, a bunch of other years. Okay, so I mentioned 2002 and 2010. Okay, so what we're seeing here is basically this is the wind speed, the zonal wind speed. So we're normally up above this line is going is the westerlies and uh, you know the direction is switching and it's basically swings to the to the easterlies okay so here we go um, at two hexapascal it's already gone below um, and switched direction to the easterlies and it look it's going to be doing that very shortly um, at five hexapascal pressures okay uh, so it's a big deal um, you can see the temperature profile here um, this is the ozone and temperature profiles. So temperature, you know, we, you know, here we are in 2019. Here we were in 2018, following this curve in 2018. And here we are in 2019. So if you look at the difference here, we've gone over zero here. And again, we're minus 60, minus 70. So minus 70 to plus 10, we have an 80 degree Celsius swing in temperature. So this is a this is quite a big deal. And there's lots of other tweets and so on um, regarding um, Antarctica. Okay, so a couple things about the glaciers. The, the glaciers are melting way faster than we realized. And uh, warming waters have caused the base of ice near the ocean floor around the South Pole to shrink by 1,463 square kilometers, an area the size of Greater London between 2010 and 2016, according to this study. So basically what's happening is, you know, this is a huge shrinkage of, of ice and it's being melted by warm water, warm ocean water, which goes underneath the ice sheet. So this is what we had. This was in 2010, a section of the ice sheet in 2010. So we have the ice here on the continent of Antarctica. There's a grounding line where the ice uh, leaves. And, 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 and then it goes over, it's no longer touching the bottom. And this is an ice shelf in the ocean here. Okay, so the ice is flowing this way from the glaciers on the land. And then what happened in 2016 is this is what we end up having. So we basically, the grounding line has been moved way, way back. All of this ice here, a large part of the thickness of this ice has just been melted away. Okay, so that because it's because of the uh, Archimedes principle, you know, as we melted away, the top lowers. So this is the profile of what we had in 2010, and this is the profile of what we have now, and this represents a huge amount of uh, mass mass loss from Antarctica. Okay, huge decline. It should give people more cause for concern. You know, rising sea level. Um, the net effect is that the ice sheet overall is retreating and uh, basically this will prompt an upward revision of sea level rise projections. Ten years ago the main driver was Greenland but Antarctica will likely surpass that soon. That's what this study was showing. Now if you go and, and uh, do search for the hashtag Antarctica as I've done here you can get all kinds of stuff here. This is a uh, you know, this is a penguin, looks like an emperor penguin, and it's kind of exploring, uh, you know, very interested in this uh, camera. You know, there's a camera sitting on the ground and it's there looking, hey, what's this? You know, they're very, very curious uh, creatures. Um, and um, basically, there's a lot of tweets here that are similar to what I've shown but lots of stuff on, on Antarctica there. And you can get the latest, remember, not just the top uh, tweets. And this is talking about the um, you know, amazing double, triple vortex above Antarctica. The New Zealand press is starting to cover it. As I showed you with their small school, I showed you the three vortices 
um, developing. If you tweet, uh, look for the hashtag SSW, Sudden Stratospheric Warming, you can get all of these images too, um, which I've shown, I've shown you um, most of them. Here's another view showing the warming here. Um, okay, uh, sudden stratospheric warming occurring and so on. Okay, so there, it's, it's very useful to use all the hashtags. Now, I went to Google Images and I looked at sudden stratospheric warming just to see some images and uh, to get some articles. So, so this is, uh, for example, polar vortex. What is it and why should you care? Okay, it talks about the lower part of the atmosphere called the troposphere, reaching up to eight kilometers over the poles. Up, you know, it says 14 to 16 kilometers over the equator. It's more like 17 kilometers over the equator. And I always thought it was about seven kilometers over the poles. So over Antarctica is four kilometers high. So you only have to go up another three or four kilometers to reach the, um, to reach the uh, stratosphere. Um, you know, and the layer of the stratosphere is about 30 kilometers deep, a very low pressure. So this is the atmosphere, the exosphere. We'll go down to the bottom. We have the troposphere up to a nominal 11 kilometers on average. And that's the temperature is high at the surface and then dropping. Um, and then when the temperature starts to go up, we call this the tropopause. There's a lot of ozone here, which absorbs energy. So the, the, the stratosphere heats up. Okay, um, so we're talking about the stratospheric warming up in, in this region. Okay, so there's now generally this happens. The, the, um, there's the vortex here and the vortex is getting offset and uh, the jet streams. Um, this is... Uh, this is uh, what pressure, it doesn't say what pressure this is. Uh, 10 millibar pressure uh, wind speed, so the winds reverse. Uh, you, can see, uh, you can see the sudden stratospheric warming occurring here and, and in these spikes, okay? So it's more common, like I said, in the Northern Hemisphere because there's a lot of, like even um, the jet streams, when they crossed the Tibetan Plateau, they were thrust up they, they uh, up into the stratosphere and they went up into the Arctic and they split the polar vortex a few years ago. I remember that happening. So that can happen quite frequently in the northern hemisphere where there's lots of terrain, not so much in the southern hemisphere. OK, so this is a sudden stratospheric warming in the northern hemisphere, uh, causing uh, serious winter weather into Europe. Um, the beast from the east, et cetera, the mid stratospheric temperature at 10 millibar warmed up 65 degrees Celsius. You know, here is the splitting. This is the cold region, um, you know, minus uh, 70 to minus 80. And this is the warm region. Uh, you know, it's still in, in minus 17, minus 20 or so. So we've seen in the, the event in, the, in Antarctica is much larger than, than, than these events. Um, in the Arctic in general. Okay, uh, so this is the, uh, basically this is the um, event in the southern hemisphere at the sudden stratospheric warming over the South Pole, rising temperatures more than 40 degrees Celsius above normal. And now we've seen, this was in September 3rd, we've seen actually 80 degrees Celsius now, not 40. Okay. Um, so basically, a little bit about it. These events are much more common in the Northern Hemisphere because of the complex terrain, topography, and atmospheric wave breaking enable more disruptive dynamics to the polar vortex. Over the South Pole, there's more water surface area, less complex terrain close to the pole. Um, so SSWs over the South Pole are rare. Only two have occurred in known reliable records, 2002-2010. And here we go, uh, and I showed you this uh, at the beginning of the video. So here we go, we're reaching, you know, actually almost 13, 14 degrees Celsius here. Anything dark red and white are above zero. Okay, huge warming effect, lots of other images here. Okay, of how things um, have been playing out in, in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, so basically, um, basically, I'm going to 
continue looking at some of the scientific papers and research on, on these events and compare what's happening now to 2002. Thank you for listening.